In this part of the lesson, we'll look at how we can create and make use of functions which return Boolean values. This is a particularly useful thing to do when you have a large range of values to validate before perhaps adding them to an existing list. Let's start by opening the file that we'll use to demonstrate these techniques, uh, and then you can click the Enable Content button just to allow any existing code to run. Yet again, it's a file that you should have seen several times already in various parts of this course so far. We can enter details of a film that you've watched, provide a score out of 10, and then click the Add to List button to have the details added to the list starting in column D. The problem we've got with this is checking that all the details the user has added are actually valid. So for example, checking that they've filled in a value for each of the three bits of information, making sure that when they type in a date, it's actually legitimately a valid date. When they type in a score, that the score is, a first of all, a number and not outside the range of 1 to 10. So to do all that, we've actually added some code already using basic if statements. If we switch to the developer tab and then the visual basic editor, you can see that we have lots of individual if statements to check that all these things are true. That makes the main subroutine quite messy and long. So what we'd like to do is extract some of this uh, code, some of this logic into separate functions, which makes these conditions much easier to test. Let's start by creating a function that can check if any individual cell is empty. I'll create a new function. I'll create this at the top of the module this time, above the subroutine add to list. So I'll create a function called value missing value missing there we go and i'll provide a single parameter which allows us to pass in a reference to any single range object so let's call this one cell to test the type of that will be a range and i would like the function to return its result as a boolean so it's either true or false i'd like the function to return true if the value of cell to test is empty and false under any other circumstances so we can check that quite simply by writing a simple if statement. If cell to test dot value equals an empty string, then I would like my value missing function to return the value true. Otherwise, I'd simply like the value missing function to return false. Value missing equals false. Finish this off with an end if, and that's the basic definition of that function. I can now use this function to replace one of the larger if statements in the original add to list procedure. So rather than checking explicitly if range b2.value is empty, I can simply pass range b2 to the value missing function, and then that will determine whether or not I need to exit from the subroutine. So let's just strip this little back bit back here and say if value missing then open some parentheses and pass in a reference to range B2. I can then close the parentheses and if that returns true, I can simply say then exit sub. So there's the basic idea. I can pass a reference to a range object to this function. When it returns true, I can choose to perform some other action. I can very quickly test this out by returning to Excel and then removing the film title from cell B2 and then simply trying to click my add to list button. And I can see that clearly nothing happens. The data does not get added to the end of the list. And it's fairly easy at this point to use the exact same function to do the same thing if I miss out the date or the score. Let's return to the Visual Basic Editor. And then I can simply copy and paste these two lines of code from within the main add to list procedure and then paste that in. This time I'll check if the date is filled in by passing a reference to cell B3 to the function. I can paste the same pair of lines in again, and this time check that the score has been filled in by passing a reference to range B4 to the function. If I then return to the Excel workbook and I can, I can retrieve the film name just by clicking the undo button, let's try missing out the score this time and then click add to list. And again, nothing happens. If I replace the score and get rid of the date and click add to list again, nothing happens because each time the value missing function is returning true. It's also worthwhile checking that the function does allow the rest of the code to run when we have filled in all the details. So with the full set of details entered, if we click the add to list button, we should indeed find that the details do get added to the list. From an end user's point of view, it might also be nice to get some indication of what they've done wrong when the data doesn't get added to the list. 
so we could do that in a variety of ways. We could change the background colour of the cell with a missing value, we could make sure that the cell gets selected for the end user, and we could also provide a simple little error message in one of the unused cells at the bottom of the list. So let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor and add that code in. The beauty of having separated out the testing for the missing value into a separate function is that we only need to add this code in one single place. Each time we call the function, it will reuse the new code we add into this function. So let's add in some extra instructions. Rather than just returning value missing equals true, let's add the code which changes the background colour of the cell. So we can say cell to test dot interior dot colour equals RGB pink, let's say. We could then make sure that we end up by selecting the cell to test. So we can say cell to test dot select. And then we can also add in the code that presents an error message in cell A5. So we can say range A5 dot value equals and then something generic like value missing. It should be fairly obvious to the end user which cell we're talking about, having selected it and changed its colour. We should also make sure that those changes are reversed if the cell does have a value entered into it. So in the else clause, we can add a couple of statements that will simply change the cell to test dot interior color. I'll get there eventually dot interior dot color equals XL none. And then let's clear the contents from range A5 as well. So range A5 dot clear contents. All that remains is to return to Excel and then check that our changes take effect. So let's add in a new film. Let's go for something mediocre. The Last Jedi will do for this example. And I'll miss out the date deliberately because I can't remember genuinely when I watched it. And then let's enter a sort of mediocre score of about five. If I click the Add to List button, we should find that the cell gets its background color changed and the cell is selected. And we get a little error message saying value missing. Let's add in a date. Uh, so it was released sort of mid-December 2017, apparently. So if I enter that date and then click the Add to List button, I should find that all those changes get reversed and the data gets successfully added to the list.